Hi guys, I'm Carla from Carla's Farmates and welcome back to another instruction video. In today's video I will be showing you how to make a berry ball. I will first throw a ball on the wheel and then later on I will be making holes in it to turn it into a berry ball. So without any further ado, let's head over to the wheel and get started. I take a ball of clay and I attach this to the bed by using a little bit of water. Then I start centering it. I first press the clay towards the middle as far as I can get it and then I start coning it up and pressing it down. I repeat this multiple times until the clay is fully centered. Then I flatten the clay a bit and I open it up by pressing my middle fingers into the middle of the clay and then I pull outwards towards myself. Then I press the clay a little bit inwards because it became a bit too wide and then I went over the bottom an extra time to just make sure it was nice and flat and then I start pulling up the walls. I take a sponge in my right hand and I press the clay towards my left hand on the inside while making an upwards movement. I repeat this multiple times to get more height in the clay and to pull up the walls. As you can see I start off with first making a straight cylinder to get the clay a little bit higher and then I slowly start pulling the clay outwards. I start at the bottom and I slowly move upwards by pressing the clay outwards. When I do this I still put a little bit of pressure on it to make the walls a little bit thinner and a little bit higher. Before making the bowl too wide I like to get rid of any water or slip that's on the inside and the outside because the clay is quite fragile when you pull it outwards and by getting rid of the water the chance of the bowl collapsing will become a bit smaller. So first get rid of that and then I go over it again to slowly pull the clay outwards and I like to make it into this round shape but you can of course make these balls in any shapes you'd like. Then I go over the whole piece with a sponge again to get rid of any water or slip that's on the piece. And I also get rid of the slip on the rim. Sometimes the rim is a little bit sharp and then what I like to do is take a little piece of plastic. This isn't anything special, just a piece of plastic that I hold in between my hands. And I slowly press this on top of the rim. This makes it nice and round and smooths it out. And that way you don't have any sharp edges here. And then I get rid of a little bit of slip that was pushed downwards by the plastic. Then I take a wooden knife to cut away a little bit of extra clay at the bottom and I also clean my bed. And then the ball is finished and ready to dry before it's leather hard. After the ball has dried for a day I start trimming it. I place it upside down on top of my giving grip and then I trim it with this trimming tool. I first go over the bottom to make sure it's nice and flat and then I cut away a little bit of excess clay at the side and I make this nice and round into one fluent shape by just cutting away more and more clay. And then I like to make a foot ring on this. Normally I just take away some clay at the middle but now I'm also taking away a little bit more clay at the sides to really make this foot ring on both sides. So it's really a ring. I just like the look of these with a berry ball but you can of course trim it in any way you'd like. Then I go over it with a sponge to get rid of any lines and just smooth it out. And then I go over it with this trimming tool. The trimming tool isn't sharp so it doesn't really trim. But this helps me to get rid of the slip that was created by the sponge and also helps me to smooth it out. And then I go over the part that I trimmed with my fingers to smooth it out and get rid of any lines. And that way it's just nice and smooth and I don't have to sand it or anything. Then I saw that there was a little bit too much clay in between the part that I trimmed and that I didn't trim. So there was a line visible there and I don't really like that. So I put these arms that are a bit lower on the given grip and then I trimmed a little bit further down. I just cut away a little bit and then I also smoothed it out the same way as I did with the rest of the bottom. And then the ball's finished but now we're going to make some holes to turn it into a berry ball. I use a hole maker for these and these are in different sizes. And I'm starting to make a pattern so I start at the bottom and I first make a hole in the bottom and then I divided it into four parts. This is just an easy way to make a pattern and it's nice and evenly spread. You don't necessarily have to make a pattern you can also just make some random holes but I always like to make a fun and a little bit of elegance pattern. And I like to use two sizes of hole makers so I'm using the smaller ones and this one that's a little bit bigger. I wouldn't use a hole maker that's too big otherwise the holes become too big and then your berries might fall out. So <laughs> I'm using two sizes but it's the airboat not too big. And when making a hole I first place the top of the tool onto the clay to see where I want to make the hole and then I slowly press it inwards by twisting it and then I slowly pull it out and then you have a nice and round hole. And just like that I make a fun pattern all over the piece. When I start working on the sides I always like to make sure that they align with the bottom. So the bottom was first divided into four parts and then I divided this into eight parts. So I'm also dividing the side in eight parts. And as you can see I made here one bigger hole and then three smaller holes underneath it and I try to align this as good as I could. Um, I just eyeball everything and don't use anything to measure. When I'm done making the holes I get rid of the little piece of clay that is still in the holes. I just press these out with this little tool. You can just use any tool you have for this. Sometimes the clay gets stuck in the hole maker itself and then I just take it out before making the next hole. Mm -hmm. 
as you can see all of the edges of the holes are quite sharp and I don't really like this so what I like to do is go over every hole with a wet sponge I just go over the rims of the holes and then press the clay a little bit downwards and smooth it out this is quite time consuming but I do really think that it has a better outcome in the end so I do think it's worth it and unfortunately I don't know a way that you can do this faster so just like I said I go over every hole with a wet sponge and I do this on the inside and on the outside of the bowl. And then as you can see the bowl is finally finished and all of the holes are nice and smooth and it's ready to dry before it can be biscuit fired. After it has been biscuit fired I start glazing it. I decided to make a glaze combination with two glazes and the first glaze that I'm using is snow. Snow is just a white glaze from Emiko. And I apply this on the whole piece, but unfortunately all of the holes also have to be glazed on the inside. So I'm using this small brush to glaze inside every hole. This is also quite time consuming, but there isn't really another option to do this. You could dip the piece into the glaze and then all of the holes will be filled on the inside. But in that case you would need a lot of the glaze and I unfortunately don't have that. So for now I'm just brushing it on with this little brush and I go over every hole. And then when I filled all of the holes I go over the whole piece with a bigger brush to just glaze it. And with this piece I'm also glazing the bottom. The only part I'm not glazing is the little foot on the bottom. It's important to let the glaze dry in between coats and if you'd like you can use a heat gun to speed up the drying process. I will be applying three coats of this glaze and when I'm applying the second coat I fill in all of the holes from the outside. That way I make sure that I completely filled all of the holes on both sides. And for the third coat I just go over the whole piece only with the big brush and I don't put any more glaze into the holes. Because two layers is enough in the holes and I also don't want too much glaze in the holes otherwise the holes might close. And after applying three coats of snow, I move over to the next glaze, which is textured turquoise. I will be applying this with a sponge. I'm using this basic throwing sponge. You can also just use a normal sponge, it doesn't necessarily have to be round or anything. And I start to make an ombre effect onto the piece. And I do this by first applying the glaze in the middle. So as you can see, I make a circle in the middle and I try to blend this out on the sides. So the sides are blended out into these little dots so that it has this fade effect. And just like that I go over it multiple times and every time I apply a new coat I go up a little bit further and that way the middle part will have more coats than the outside and because of that it will be darker in the middle and lighter on the outside and that way you get this faded ombre effect. This is also quite time consuming but it also has quite a nice effect in the end. And just like that I go over it 5 or 6 times. And on the end you have to be a little bit careful to not put too much glaze on the rim because you don't want any dark spots here. So I just take a little bit of glaze and I make little dots on the end so that it fades in nicely. And then I do the same thing on the outside and this time I started at the bottom. And it's of course important to let the glaze dry in between coats. And I decided to not apply textured turquoise on the bottom because I wasn't sure if it would drip a little bit and I didn't want it to get stuck to my kiln shelf. So I decided to keep the bottom white. And just like that I worked all the way up to the rim and I left the top of the rim white. And then the glazing is finished and I get rid of a little bit of glaze I got onto the rim here at the bottom. So I just carefully take this off with a wet piece of fabric. I often twist my piece on top of a wet piece of fabric but if I would do that with this one then the glaze at the bottom would also go away. And then when the food's nice and clean it can go into the kiln for a glaze fire. And here are some pictures of the final result. I'm quite happy with how it turned out. That was it for this video, thank you very much for watching, I hope you liked it and you learned something new from it. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And if you're going to make these berry balls yourself and you're going to post them on Instagram, please tag me at Carlos because I would love to see it. I hope to see you next week. Bye!